Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One take and uncut. So this is going to be kind of an introductory video for anybody that wants to better understand liquidity and spread. And then I'm going to kind of tie some information into the World Economic Forum. So and without further ado, also, I did upload a video on my second channel of a Chris Larson interview. Highly recommend it. I will link that in the top of this video's description. So for example, guys, what does spread refer to? And we always kind of get this catch-all term liquidity and I know it kind of you know encompasses so many things depending on the context but essentially the more liquidity there is the cheaper the payments will be so if XRP kind of wants to aim to be that intermediary that bridge asset it has to have a highly liquid market what that essentially means is that there's a bunch of buyers and sellers at any given time high high volume and at various price points so for example the green over here we can see right now those are the buy orders we have you know 31,000 you know xrp offering to be bought at 19 cents or 19.45 cents all right now we have sell orders over here and they're selling at you know 1947 and as we can see the spread is the difference between the buying offer and the selling offer so we right here we have 0 0.0001 so that is the spread now the difference between it what happens is the small you know the closer that these two offers are together the smaller the spread is which essentially means that you know this type of trade this transaction is going to be cheaper so with on-demand liquidity which is you know basically the software offer that ripple ripple net offers we want all these corridors usd euro you know even domestically between walled gardens or just you know the use cases with ODL today with the Australian corridor, the Philippine peso, the Mexican peso. We want them to have tons and tons of buyers and sellers. Of course, we're using various exchange partners. Like in Mexico, we use Bitso. But this is what happens. And again, you know, Brad Garlinghouse has said it, Jungle Inc. has said, it, everybody's been saying it. Liquidity begets liquidity. This is the type of ecosystem they need to build if this is going to be the financial lubricant. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, I know that it says start trading Ripple here, but then XRP USD here. Coinbase Pro, or, you know, um, you know, they kind of have to update their information. And let me know if you guys remember. If, I think, you know, they changed it in like early 2018 or. 2017 it used to be called gdax instead of coinbase pro but anyways i'm going to read this definition here this is found on the website so ripple.com slash xrp right here what does liquidity mean liquidity within a transaction refers to how easy it is to convert an instrument into cash for withdrawal cash is considered the standard for liquidity because it can easily be exchanged to and from other assets as that bridge asset today some other examples of liquid assets are treasury bills notes and bonds now something that might not be as liquid are other assets like you know a vehicle it's going to take some time to get you know cash for that there's multiple steps things of that nature All right now if a financial transaction is an engine with moving parts then liquidity is the oil that makes it move currently there are pools of trapped capital around the world these are the pre-funded accounts these nostro vostro accounts we talk about and it's kind of like just in case money in a bunch of types of currencies all right, and sending money from one currency to another requires financial institutions to pre-fund accounts in the destination currency. Now, as we've said in the Chris Larson interview, again, that video, that video, the link is in the top description or the top of the description of this video. We explain that sometimes these, you know, hard to reach corridors, they have to go through like three different groups. So if you wanted to send, you know, the, uh, the rupee to, you know, the Thai bot, you actually might have to go through a few different intermediaries with RippleNet and utilizing on-demand liquidity once the lo lo liquidity is truly developed we can just go direct and xrp can be the bridge between those two assets instead of going from usd to the rupee to you know the singapore dollar to the thai bot instead of going through all of those groups which is you know expensive timely and inefficient all right so in order for transactions to flow freely across borders and pay out instantly, there needs to be enough volume of transactional of the transactional instrument and XRP in this case of on demand liquidity being traded from one currency to the next. If liquidity does not flow, transactions break down, meaning with this spread, if someone was offering to sell or, you know, sell their XRP at, let's say, you know 22 cents but someone's only offering to buy 
at 20 cents. That is a two cent spread. And so you're going to have to pay the difference if you decide to go through that. Now, a lot of people set limit orders, which is a little more, you know, cost efficient when you're, you know, trading or you kind of want to set it just in case. But when you do, you know, buy orders, just a market order, you could really eat up this order book. It doesn't take as much volume. I know Coinbase Pro is a lot more liquid than other exchanges. But I mean, if you put a, you know, $100,000, you know, not over the counter, but typically I'd recommend that. Um, you know, market buy order, this is going to move that price up substantially. And you can actually go through the order books, count, you know, how much XRP and see the depth of this order book and see what a hundred thousand dollar buy or even a ten thousand dollar buy would do. Now, granted, a 10K buy wouldn't really do too much to price, but with some exchanges, you can do. I mean, there's illegal activities and it's not regulated yet with spoofing. And I mean, you can you can move the price up with some cryptocurrencies by five cents or, you know, 10% on some unregulated exchanges. All right. So I want to just emphasize that. Okay. Um, again, guys, just showing the logarithmic chart. Sorry about that. Um, let me just refresh this. All right. So right here, this was am I on logarithmic right now. All right. So I want to go to logarithmic just cause I kind of prefer to see that now keep in mind this is on bitstamp but i just like to see this difference so again logarithmic price scale guys this is basically based off you know the percentage change rather than a linear price scale where it's kind of based off of the actual price in a linear model so i just kind of like to see how far we've come i know a lot of people like to draw fractals um you know personally i'm just looking at the fundamentals i'm listening to what you know where this ecosystem's going i also look at ta and various fractals within it and just kind of listen to a whole group of people make up my own mind and just understand that nothing is guaranteed um but i do believe that we are you know bottoming out and i think that we're going to see some tremendous upside you guys know i'm bullish but i want you guys to do your own research and as you can understand for this xrp and the xrp ledger to be part of the future financial ecosystem or even just dominate the cross-border market or hopefully really really be one of the key players in decentralized finance DeFi. we have to you know establish tons of liquidity now we need tons of volume but what happens is when there's tons of buyers and sellers if we have low price it's not going to really push it up so what happens is we want to basically incorporate larger buy orders and larger transfers within this higher transfers you know larger amounts of money and high volume will push the price up keep in mind i mean right here this is like three dollars and twenty cents on some exchanges we saw as high as three dollars and 84 cents for xrp during its all-time high and look how much progress not price but in terms of connections api integrations you know proof of concepts and you know even regulations have come we have you know the gentleman that literally created the bit license we have you know craig uh, phillips on the you know ripple board members we have all these people from blackrock we have people leaving ripple to go work for blackrock you can see the connections and they're kind of just going back and forth when you're investing in an open source protocol um you know you can absolutely invest in the ecosystem but i am investing in the people that are building on this all right now let me just keep going here so this was on the xrp website and before i get into the, some other topics stable so this is not referring to price guys this is talking about their development their you know they've never had an error or with their entries you know as we can see here their ledgers have closed without issue since inception that is very very rare well over 50 million you know ledgers successfully closed so xrp seven year track record of stable technology and governance makes it ready for institutional and enterprise use so established in 2012 again energy consumption is very negligible we can see a dedicated team of world-class engineers also keep in mind the logos network acquisition i am excited guys especially for collateralized debt positions not only xrp but we actually see them doing this with you know bitcoin and ethereum of course more as a, a dap platform but you have to understand if they're going to collateralize debt this is a whole nother use case and escrowing the amount of xrp further reducing the supply so i am very very bullish for a lot of these reasons all right now this is really cool and i'm going to finish up with this so this is shared by mickey b fresh this is the world economic forum guys so i'm going to go to the top here and i'm just going to breeze through this and i will also provide this in the top of the description so world economic forum and this is the white paper inclusive deployment of blockchain for supply chains part six a framework for blockchain interoperability in collaboration with deloitte one of the biggest groups working on this initiative we've also showed their connections to ripple the company and themselves and of course with ethereum and groups like hyperledger right here april 2020 so we're gonna kind of speed through this and i'll just kind of go and talk about what i like here um i actually read it this morning um 
executive summary, I guess, would be a good start for anyone. So again, same thing, guys, talking about interoperability, and there's a few components for this, um, talking about the ecosystem itself, and of course, you know, various ecosystems, various walled gardens, they still need a bridge asset, they need, you know, a protocol to bridge them, and they need a ledger. Okay, talking about, you know, um, atomic swaps in particular. So right here, atomic swaps are smart contracts that give you the ability to exchange dig digital assets on chain or off chain seamlessly and securely without the involvement of a third party. So keep in mind, the funds can be put in escrow. Once the conditions are met and they are cryptographically signed, the funds are then released. This is based off of math. You cannot change the smart contract once you've already implemented it. Tons and tons of benefits here to get rid of intermediaries, in which is also referred to as disintermediation. So it's going to basically create an ecosystem of trust wherein, you know, whereas commerce today, essentially we have an ecosystem of mutual mistrust. We need the design and basically incentivize mutual trust. All right, talking about the API, of course, this is a common word we use. So API is a piece of code that governs the access point to a server and the rules developers must follow to interact with the database, library, a software tool, or a programming language, right? And it's all connected right here to the database or this blockchain, all right? Some are permissioned, some are permissionless. We're going to see a bunch of permissioned databases and blockchains created, which is fine, but they will also have access directly to permissionless blockchains, such as the XRP ledger. Anybody can build on it. Anyone can see those public transactions. But then if these financial institutions want to create their own walled gardens, for example, even the court of settler, if they do decide to use XRP and start settling with it, they can have their own permission blockchain and let their exclusive group of, you know, top tier banks working on that in the world of trade finance. All right. And again, guys, this is all shared by Mickey B. Fresh, Mr. Fresh Time. Must follow on Twitter, guys. Some great research. All right. I'm going to go talking about the three layers, of course, of interoperability. So we can see the business model, the platform itself, and infrastructure. We can see governance, which is great for the XRP you know, ledger itself. Um, consensus, of course, proof of correctness, proof of consensus, extremely, extremely secure. We know XRP ledger now, Ripple only owns 4% of them. That is awesome. Now, keep in mind, that is not the same as the supply that Ripple owns. So there's still a difference between, you know, decentralization and centralization. But I think, you know, on that spectrum, on, as we approach, you know, complete decentralization, I would just say it's becoming more and more distributed. And at the end of the day, if you are going to revamp the entire financial system in terms of whether whether it's, you know, cross-border payments, trade finance, decentralized finance, and, you know, creating derivative products, it doesn't matter. I don't care about centralization to the point I am here investing in a, you know, a speculative asset that I'm hoping derives its value from true utility down the road. All right. I'm talking about these groups. And then what I wanted to tie in, let me see here. Okay, uh, almost there, because I wanted to tie in with SAP and just kind of bring it home with this. I was just kind of glancing at that this morning. So right here, guys, figure 12, documented interoperability between individual blockchain technologies or interoperability solutions. Parties that claim to be working on establishing interoperability, but have not yet presented working solutions are not shown. So these groups are all validated and are working on true solutions, whether it's blockchain tech or interoperability solutions. As we can see here, we have Corda the open source you know platform that is utilized by r3 okay we have the company ripple we have interledger which was you know kind of built upon by hyperledger and ripple we have cosmos with their native platform and working with you know interledger as well and their you know uh token which is atom atom or you know they kind of call it the um, internet of blockchains to connect blockchains we have ethereum at the very center of this which i find interesting perhaps it's based off its you know distributed applications we can see Bitcoin. Um, I think Ethereum will absolutely increase its scalability, um, but that is kind of hopium and me wishing as well. And just based off of the integration I see with a lot of the institutions, I think that there's going to be some efforts to do so. Um, we also have Hyperledger. We know Hyperledger, Quilt, Hyperledger. They are highly, highly connected with, of course, the company Ripple and funding, you know, Interledger itself. So what I want to show here now, we can see these groups. We can see IBM, we can see, you know, the supported blockchains behind them. And now SAP, guys, 
SAP is a behemoth. Notice, right here, they've developed interoperability with R3 Corda. Corda's only asset, the digital asset that they named can settle with, is XRP. Specifically, now they did say they can settle with any digital asset, but it was very peculiar that they made that you know type of vested interest. We know that back in the day there was a $5 billion XRP lawsuit for them to be gifted that from Ripple. I am not sure on the exact amount that they settled upon. I'm just assuming that they do have a vested interest in the success of the XRP ecosystem and of course david rudder ceo of r3 has an nda and cannot discuss ripple at all so again they're working on standardization we understand this okay now what i want to show you is the connection with sap to specifically ripple as well in the integrations with not only RippleNet but xrp so right here we can see SAP. This is an older one from 2016. I'm going to show you how much they've grown. So SAP Ariba, their platform boasts over 2 million companies within a system that transacts more than $2.5 billion in transactions every 24 hours. So $2.5 billion over the XRP ledger, if this were the case, and they went on and scaled up to 100% every day over 190 countries. Pretty wild to think that. Now, again, this is all based off of supply chain. All right, so it enables companies to carry out supply chain interactions between themselves, ordering through payments, and of course, they need settlements. Now, as we go right here, now we see payments.com. This just came out recently, um, like 2020 of April. The Reba network has now more than, instead of 2 million, 4.6 million companies in over 190 countries, which makes it the largest business network in the world. All right, now let's keep going with this. And I want to basically point out how SAP is also integrated and at least has connected and done various proof of concepts with the company Ripple. So right here, SAP and blockchain. So we can see Ariba partners with Everledger to include blockchain capabilities. We already know how big Ariba is themselves. And also proof of concept with Ripple's distributed ledger technology for SAP payments engine. So this is proof again, Platinum member of Hyperledger. Hyperledger is a group that is backed and helped develop Interledger protocol alongside with Ripple. So they have a vested interest for these groups to use a standardized protocol for interoperability, similar messaging, and basically linking all of these networks, okay, whether it's via the cloud, banking, mobile networks, you name it. So Hyperledger and Ripple have vested interests to ensure this, and typically Interledger protocol will pick the best asset, the cheapest and most fast, efficient, you know, payment path to do this. So essentially XRP and IOP interledger protocol were built in tandem. So again, this is actually a huge thread and this is all by Bank XRP. So again, showing ATB Financial, the largest Alberta based financial institution collaborating with SAP, the fintech and or excuse me, SAP and the startup Ripple. And they're talking about doing this payment. I know we've sh shared this many, many times on this channel, at least last year. Um, Again, proof of concepts, we've shared this as well with SAP and their cloud platform, utilizing the advantages of RippleNet. So it's, I mean, right there out in front of you, you guys can find tons of these videos on YouTube and online. Um, but as we can keep going, I just kind of want to show you a few other things. So again, you know, tying it into Earthport as well by, again, FCA is the Financial Conduct Authority, SWIFT member. And then right here, this is a video clip. This is about 48 seconds long. Banking innovation with SAP and Ripple specifically showing, you know, ATB Financial, and we get, you know, respank. So Ripple and SAP integration, proof of concepts. And we have this gentleman, the software, senior software engineer at SAP Labs, discussing this. Overseas payment process took 20 seconds instead of three days. So let's just kind of take a look. Hopefully it's not too blurry. But again, we can see it connects directly to the Ripple network itself. And this is all found by Bank XRP on Twitter. So I just want to show you guys there's so much that meets, you know, there's so much more to this network and these connections, 190 countries, 4.6 million businesses. And if you want to learn more about SAP and the Ariba network, they're backing with Goldman Sachs. Keep in mind, you know, look at Goldman Sachs and their biggest investments and even backing behind R3, along with groups like BlackRock, along with groups like State Street. To me, this is just a done deal. Um, I don't, I know I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Again, none of this is financial advice. Always do your own research. Do make your own decisions for yourselves. I just wanted to show you some information that support the reason why I believe in a higher extra P price. So with that, guys, I appreciate it as always, and I will see you in the next video.